Uh, welcome to the Marshall Podcast. I'm Chanel Marshall. And I'm Antoine Marshall. Uh, so make sure you guys like and subscribe to the channel. It's right here. Uh, check out our past videos. Our last um, video, we had a announcement. So if you didn't check that one out, make sure you check it out, as well as our previous videos. And just to let you know, our channel is geared towards talking about a variety of different topics from relationships to education to finances. So if you're interested in those type of topics, that's what you'll get from our channel. Um, but as far as today, we're going to talk about college and we'll also dive into specifically black colleges as well. And the question is, is college still needed? So my very short answer to that is yes. I do think college is still needed, but I did hear an interesting um, stat that they mentioned on the news the other day that college admissions is down by 40%. And they didn't get into you know exactly why, but I do have my speculations of why. And I think one of the reasons why is because there's just so many different avenues that you can go into when it comes to your career. But going back to why I think college is still needed, is still valuable, is because there's just certain professions that you can't avoid going. You, you want to make sure that your doctor went to medical school, um, even a lawyer. I mean, I know people, I, th I think it was who, well, no, she was in school. I was about to say Kim Kardashian, but she, she was in law school. Um, just different professions, it's just, it, you want to make sure that person has gotten their degree. Um, even for me in banking, um, the, the area that I work in in banking, you have to have a bachelor's degree. There's no way around that. So I just think that certain paths, it's, it's just required. You can't, um, you can't avoid it. But if you're not trying to go that route, I do think that there's a lot of art alternatives that people are just tapping into now because they don't want student loan debt. And then it also could be that they see how they can make money faster as opposed to being in college for four to eight years, depending on what you're trying to do. So I think today the reason that it's down is because of the paths that you can go but um, for me personally, I still think that there is value in, in going to college, whether it's, you know, building uh, relationships, learning how to work with different people, um, because at the end of the day, college is not going to teach you everything that you need for your profession. But I do think that the experience is definitely worth it. <laughs> So I'm going to say yes and no. It depends on the individual. I think that to piggyback on what you said earlier, there's always been different avenues besides college. I think since the middle 90s to the early 2000s, maybe even early 90s, it has it has no longer been sexy to do trade, to learn how to do, do carpentry, mm. welding, which are all great jobs and careers, especially to start your own business landscaping um, you know there's just a lot of different avenues that you can do a one-year trade school be an electrician and make six figures just off of this if you're we're based in detroit or around detroit area so focus hope i have two friends who went um straight from high school to focus hope and got a year and a half of training and they making six figures a year doing electric uh, electricity uh, yeah as a electrician you know okay. and so and that's their and, and it wasn't, I mean, it's still math and everything, still classes, but that's something they wanted to do. I don't think it's being offered or pushed to kids anymore. It's it's college, college, college. Now, I think personally, I mean, obviously, I went to college too, and I think college is is good, especially for young people to get it's a good way to break into the real world safely. 
if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, it does make sense. When I say safely, mean it's a good way. I don't know what you mean. I'm about to explain. It's, it's a good way to break into the real world as far as being on your own, being responsible for yourself, nobody waking you up to go to class. Um, if you don't do your homework, that's on you. It's money involved. So nobody's going to care if you show up or not. You got, you know, you're spending money on classes. You now probably have a part time job now, some students. So it's a good way instead of just diving straight in into from 18, you know, um, it used to be a time, it's still a time, you know, where you 18, you can work at four or Chrysler make what 18, 19 an hour right now, just which is not bad either. But I think that. <sighs> oh, Chanel. You didn't think about I did that. know it's a lot of things I could say. I, I it's hard to just It's a lot of things I could say. Alright, I'll start over one more time. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hit record. <clears throat> this is take number three for me. <laughs> <laughs> College is important. Depending on the individual, I think that trade schools and um, vocational schools and skills, life skills in high school has been taken away and it's no longer been pushed or onto kids anymore because college has been such a big thing since the early 90s. And it has, it has now, it's not sexy to go to trade school. You know, it's not looked frowned upon, but it's not, it's like, if you go to college, oh my God, congratulations, which is, which is right. But Shani, you should have the same level of enjoyment if your child, I'm going to trade school and I want to learn welding, you know, right. or I want to learn, I want to be a electrician, or I want to be, uh, I, want, I, want, I want to do uh, cooling and heating and run my own business, carpentry. Those are all great fields in the high demand, especially now. Yeah. I mean, if you go to Home Depot, see how much stuff costs, you know, these people can hike their prices up and people still getting stuff done. So I, I agree with you. College is important. There's certain fields. You know, I was in your profession, you know, you need college. But even in your profession, wouldn't it be even better if it's like a one year of schooling and two years of credit college, of learning, of banking, if that's what people want to go into? Mm -hmm. So maybe college needs to be reformed more, you know, mm -hmm. and colleges and universities also, they get smart. They should offer trade school programs like, hey, you can come to Michigan State for one year and, and get a trade certificate. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? So and the money, the money is a big, big factor right now mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Yeah. You know, if you don't have a full ride or have a family or have a mother or father who can dish out that cash, excuse me, and if you want those students who's struggling, that's, you know, I'll be honest with you, if our son or daughter is not, has not been really good in school, and it's like they want to go to college, my advice to them is you even want to go to community college first, mm -hmm. get your grades to where they need to be, and then I know here in Michigan at community college, if you keep a 3.0, you can get a full ride to any school in Michigan, university. So if they keep a 3.0 at the community college, they can get a full ride at U of M or Michigan State or Wayne State or some of these other schools. But that's if they do that. But uh, if I have to pay, I'm not. You're not going to uh, 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 Notre Dame. <laughs> that's just not happening. So right. I think um, it depends on an individual. Okay. So let me ask you a question. As your child is entering the 10th grade and 11th grade, and I was getting to that point to where you want to start, that you want to start talking about college more so, and SATs and SATs and everything. And you, do you, and you can tell that they're not, even they're getting good grades, you can tell that their school is just not for them. Mm. Do you still like, hey, you know, what college you want to do, or do you also show them other avenues? of how to be successful as well? No, that's a good question. I, I mean, I would, just like what you just explained, if if my child 
is displaying that they maybe they literally point out say I don't want to go to college I want to you know do something else I want to go to a trade school I, w- I would definitely support that mm-hmm. just based on what you're saying especially as far as the money mm-hmm. you know side of things and I, I liked how you mentioned that um you know it not going to college and going the route of a trade and things like that is not sexy because that that does remind me of how just our our parents it's i will say especially the generation of our parents Mm -hmm. it's they didn't suggest they didn't even suggest um going to a trade and doing something for a year or two and making good money um i don't know i i don't know why it's i guess it is like you mentioned kind of like a status type thing of well you got to go to college because that's how you're going to um you know get a job which is not which is a whole nother thing because just because you go to college Mm -hmm doesn't guarantee that you're going to get a job after spending all this money and student loans and spending all that time uh, especially when i graduated from school and i mentioned this in one of our other videos i graduated during a recession in 2008 so it took me a few years to get into my career so it's just like there, there is no guarantee. There's no guarantee when you um, go to college. So one of the things that I was thinking about when you were talking is just the idea of how college is a business. Oh yeah. It's, it's a bit. It's, it's, it's an institution to. It is not a non for profit. It's a profit. It is. It is a profitable institution that just continues to you know reap on young people 18 19 year old getting you know thousands of dollars a day i think the average is like at least thirty thousand, if not more now and so i think that's why that's a big reason like you mentioned of why people are looking at other avenues so yeah, um, one of the things, is especially, I mean, obviously, we went to college at the same time, but, and I'm sure they're still doing it now. When, shoot, I'm in school now, and I'm paying out of pocket, and every once in a while, they'll do the same thing to me. They would be like, you know, you want to take out a student loan? Like, no. <laughs> but they say it to these young kids like it's nothing. Yeah. Like, you're fine. Like, no, no, you're not fine. You know, um, you got to pay that back with with interest. And if you keep, obviously, most, especially when it comes to Africa, unfortunately, when it comes to African-American kids or minorities, all of us don't have a full ride, but we want to go to college. Mm -hmm. And student loans is the only way that we can complete these classes. You know, we can't pay the, we we can't get the money, we can't take the class, which, which sucks, you know. Um, obviously, there's still there's other programs too that you probably don't have to get too many student loans, scholarships, or whatever, so that you can still apply for while you're in college too. But uh, they kind of they, they don't kind of they feast on that. Like mm-hmm. you said, this is it's not for non profit, it's for profit. Mm-hmm. It's for profit. So I think college. I don't think I know college is important, but it is not important enough to make it your only child's option when entering the real world. I think your kids should have options. Now, they want to be a doctor, lawyer, want to go into finance and business, whatever, I mean, or a teacher. I mean, there's, there, there, there's certain fields that, yes, you do need a, a bachelor's or a master's. You want to be a scientist, you, you do. There's no way around it, you know? But if they just want to like start a business or make a bunch of money, there's other avenues that you can, you know what I'm saying, that they can be happy and joyful. And, and maybe down the line, they, they will still g- go to college. You know, some people take off after high school and want to wait a couple of years and make money. Mm-hmm. So, okay, that's what's up. Do a one-year trade school, 
get you a good job and, and stack your money up. And then at 25, you might be going to college and you could pay out of pocket if you don't want to use um, student loans. So I, I think that we have to, and I see this now as a educator myself, that it's, it's not when my mom was growing up and I'm sure your mom is as well, mom and dad as well. They had life skill classes. You know, they learn how to do their taxes in school. My mom told me all the time, she was in middle school. They learn how to cook. Welding in most schools was, was, was required, you know, if you wanted to take an elective in high school. Like, they learn these skills. That's why you see so many older people with painting business and, uh, um, and other type of businesses where it comes to working on homes or buildings or being an electrician because that's what they learn. That's a skill that they learn. So it's like, I can go to college or I can build this business in two or three years and, and at 23, 24, making almost six figures a year running my own business. That's what that's how they learn, which is a great thing. But they took that away from us because, and, and here's my thing. Here's my theory too, and, and it's not even a theory. College is, is good. All these things are good. But a lot of times college also makes a lot of us worker bees. Mm. You go to college to pay back the government when you get your job and you also have to work for somebody. And that's not something that you want to do, which half of us, that's not. A lot of people I know now, like half the people I know now that we, I went to college with are not doing anything in, in their field, mm -hmm. but are doing something that they love too. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I did a, um, a shoe for a friend of mine I went to Wayne State with. We were both in a, a med school. I was obviously going for veterinary medicine. She was going for med school and we was both taking a high level classes. And, and we will always study together. She's now in a whole nother profession that has nothing to do with medicine. And she's loving it, she's enjoying it. And now we don't knock our college years. It, it helped us, it did. It helped us uh, spiritually, mentally, professionally, still did. Mm -hmm. But we obviously in different fields now. And that happens, you know? So sometimes when the kids say, at 10, I wanna be a doctor, it's like, that's what's up. And you do things for the kid to, to mold and be a doctor. But as time goes on, that kid is like, you know what? I want to do something else. But because I've been on this doctor bench for so long, I don't stick with it. But now here I am in organic chemistry too. And I don't want to do this right. anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, that was, that's good. Um... I don't know how to follow that. Let me say, since you don't know how to follow that, I, I, I will say, say say this. And I think you can kind of attest it to this way more than I can. Because I was never, I, I I grew up, do what you love. My mom was never like, college is the thing. But I knew she wanted me to go to college, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's what I wanted. And, I, and that's what I wanted to do as well. Um, but when it comes to... Uh, uh, when it comes to picking a profession, pick a profession that you can make money in and not something that you're happy in. Right. Have you right. dealt with that or have you felt that way? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I was pushed to focus on which area I can make money as opposed to just what's going to make me happy. I think... If I had came to my parents and said that I wanted to be a painter, they would have looked at me like I was crazy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was thinking about how you mentioned, because when I first went to college, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew that um, while I was in college, I'm like, well, I like numbers and I think I'm good with talking with people, so I thought I was gonna do like financial advisory, which is something that I could still do. Mm -hmm. But um, and then I also had thought about teaching, which you know, um, but I didn't go. And to be honest with you, I wish that I did think more about what I really felt passionate about. And at that time, and still for a long time, I felt really, really passionate about wanting to be a teacher. I, um, but to be honest with you, I just like how you mentioned about the example of you was on a 
people yourself and mm-hmm. even others was like on a long kind of science yeah. path. I was already on my finance yeah. path mm-hmm. and I was just like, oh, I, I mean, I'm almost done. Mm-hmm. And if I try to do this education, I got to kind of start over and then I'm going to have a couple more years on top of the fact that teachers don't get paid well. And that was what was kind of instilled in me. Look for a profession that's going to have longevity and it's going to allow you to progress um, as far as your pay. Right. So I, I didn't go that route. And I think I would have been a, probably happier, even though I wouldn't have been making the money that I can potentially make now in the, in the area that I'm in now. I, I think that in the long run, we should definitely push more on, you know, what what are you passionate about and what truly makes you happy? I was watching something the other day and we talk about this all the time mm-hmm. as far as, um, you know, not waiting until 65 to enjoy your life. Right. And I think that sometimes college does um, have that kind of path or agenda where you it, it, it causes you to be stuck. Yeah. You know, because you now have this student loan debt mm-hmm. and you have to work for someone. Hopefully they, you know, have insurance and a mm-hmm. 401k and then got to work for 30 years and then now you can retire. And I think that that mindset is is totally different now. People want to retire early and enjoy yeah. their life now. Now. <laughs> now. <laughs> mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, I know that's something that I want to do. I don't, I want to retire early. Like I'm seeing more and more people mm-hmm. do. I don't want to wait to live my life. I'm, I'm trying to live it now. So I think that college can have that um, effect where it can kind of pigeonhole you to be kind of stuck. Yeah, no, that's, that's very true. And that's, and it's funny that you said that before I decided to go into broadcast media, that's how I felt. I was, um, before I met my wife, I was doing research at a Krusky Eye Institution for Diabetes. And it was a prestige re- research. I actually had two science articles published, but I wasn't happy. I thought it was, was my boss, cause I didn't like her <laughs> either, um, but it wasn't her. It wasn't the fact that I didn't love science. It was the fact that I had another love for something else that I, for the past, at the time I'm like 22. So for the, from 19 to 22, I also had this other love that was growing for TV and media. And I've been ignoring it, just like how you just said it. I've been, since day one, when Jurassic, when the first Jurassic Park came out, I said, I want to be an archeologist, something <laughs> with science. So I was like, what, six or seven. So since day one, I've been science, science, science. My grandmother's still at our house have all of my dinosaur books and it's hundreds of them. She still have them. Mm-hmm. She even has my little niece, I mean, my, my little cousin, my auntie's daughter, not my little niece. My auntie and I were close to the same age, so she feels like it. <laughs> <laughs> but reads the books and my little cousin can read the dinosaur names just as well as I could at, at her age. So. All of my, all of the, the things, I was always science, science, science. My mom did right. She fed that. She did right. She see how much I loved it. But she also seen how much when I became a teenager, I did, I did a little acting. You know, I did was in a uh, music video with Obi Trice. Um, Who is Obi Trice? Obi Trice is a rapper that, if you know Eminem, he under Eminem for a while in that area. He hasn't did much. <laughs> and that video, which was a lot of fun, they paid us good money, did not go far as I would have liked it to go. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, you know, and even in college, I did three acting classes, you know, my undergraduate in college, and I had fun. So, but I still ignored it because science is just hard. Concrete, science, is a, it's, it's a job, it's secure. Come on, acting, I'll be in Hollywood, wait, you know, serving tables, and then acting at night you know, for $10 an hour just to, so that's what I was thinking about, Mm -hmm. which is the wrong thought to have. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to be a starving artist. I don't want to do this and that, but um, I should have, you know, just like we uh, talked about 
in a previous podcast how I wish I, me and a few of our of, of my friends would have got our little money together and bought one of those brownstone townhouses. It's, it's just certain things that it's like, man, nobody held me back or told me no, but society and growing up kind of formulate that mindset of acting you come on one in a million right so don't even try stick to what you're doing yeah. and that's what i did and mm -hmm. even when i started the media company i started in photography i have family members is it money in that mm -hmm. you know i'm like i don't know but i'm about to figure out <laughs> now they see there's a lot of money in it as because they see what i'm doing but and i wish i would have started this years ago mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. so it's, it's never too late. I'm happy with what's going on. I'm not saying that, but I, I think that society and even parenting, you know, and, and one day we'll be parents and we're not going to be perfect too. We might give a suggestion that we think is right, but that's not, you know, and it may I, not be for that child. you know, right, exactly. So I, I, I pray to God when, when, when we do come to that point, we do have that teenager that don't let me put my wants and desires on them mm. at all. Mm -hmm. I want them to flourish in what they love. If they want to be a painter, well, guess what? Mom and dad, we got these businesses. Mom got this job. Dad got this uh, his uh, media company. As you mentioned, I didn't mention teaching because like my wife said, I'm trying to retire soon in a couple <laughs> of years. But we have things to where, go for it. Don't even worry about money. This property right here, why don't you manage that property? And that can be your income while you're trying to be a painter. Mm, what if they don't want to do that? Well, then go to Starbucks and work then and, <laughs> and, and be a painter. And, and, you know, work at McDonald's part time. I mean, you're going to have to make money somehow, <laughs> you know, and, and keep selling your paintings and see what happens or whatever sort of painter you're trying to be. Because there is good money in painting once you get to that level, mm -hmm. you know, so, yeah. Yeah, um, when you were talking, it, it did make me think about how another thing with college is that I think that you should spend that time more so trying to figure out what it is that you really mm -hmm. want to do. Because even now, being out of college, I realize that there are things that I'm good at that I didn't even know, like with my hands. As a woman, I think I'm pretty Handy. good mm -hmm. with my hands and I didn't even like know that. So I just, I say that to say that it takes time to sometimes develop and know what you, you know, want to do or passionate about and don't, don't allow society or your parents um, to pressure you into feeling like you have to know what you do, what you want to do after that four years. Like use that four years to figure out yourself is what I would. Use that four years, you said that's what you was to, to figure out what you want to do. No, that's a that's a very good point. Um, you mentioned you realize you're good with your hands and I'm thinking, you know, so we've been living in our house now for a little over, over four years. So obviously when you get a home, there's maintenance, right? There's things that you have to do inside and outside things break down and some things you learn to fix on your own. Thank you to YouTube University, yeah. which is, we talk about college. So that's one of the best colleges <laughs> and it's pretty much free. It is free. Yeah. It's very, very free. All you got to do is just sit down and listen and then apply yourself. Um, I grew up, um, I grew up, my mother, a single parent, but we, we grew up with my, I grew up with my aunt, uncle, and grandma. So we was all in the same house and, and my sister. And so when it comes to yard work, we were all out there, you know. So I grew up, my mom was cutting grass, so was my uncle. And when I was able to, so was I, shoveling snow, raking leaves. My mom, every year at our house, she has to do something different to her backyard. Her backyard is fine, but she has to do something different. <laughs> so it was, it was always yard work. So when we got this house, I'm like, listen, I, I told you, I got bad allergies. I don't want to be out here long. I ain't actually cut the grass, but can you at least help me pull some weeds? And my wife is a great team player, so she came out. And 
she do be enjoying the stuff. You know, she enjoy it way more than I do, you know. And we are, one of our properties, we're going to be putting up a fence. And she's more eager than I am, even though I do want to learn too. So when we want to put up a fence of, of our own, I say all that to say, if you do not come from an environment that is allowing you to, not that anybody was holding you back, but your dad did all of that. Like, yeah. I don't even think your brother did stuff. You know what I'm saying? Your dad did everything. Yeah. So you came from an environment where he just did everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I came from an environment where if you got a son in the house, he better be out there with you, mm -hmm. you know. But if you did, if your dad did say, come out here and check this out, you would have known that you would have had to have love for that just like your aunt does. You, you have an aunt who's really handy. Yeah. And she loves to be outside. And it's a, for a lot of for a lot of seasonal people, older people, that's a good workout. That's a good way to escape life. That's a good working in their gardens, working in their house. They, they love it. Yeah. And I, I understand it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not there with them, but I do <laughs> understand it. And but fixing up your own house and everything and learning to do these things also do feel good. It really does. Like I did that. We build patios by ourselves. It feels good. Mm -hmm. Now, would I go build somebody else's patio? No. But these are skills that can be taught in high school that mm -hmm. can develop into a career for certain students. Yes. Yeah. You know, landscaping. Mm -hmm. A 11 10th grader can take landscaping classes. And they can be a 4.0 student too and be everything, but you know, they're like, you know, but I got this. be making money now. Yeah, and, and be like, you know what, I, I want to just get a lawnmower, a weed cutter, some some tools, and just see what I can do this summer and this year. And if I can do my thing with this, maybe I don't really want to do college yet or at all. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, so the skills, heating and cooling. There's a young lady, I don't know her name at all, but she's on my Facebook, one of my friends on Facebook. She has a heating and cooling business of her own. Mm. And she documents herself going to people's houses. She had a, her whole uniform and everything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, there's different avenues of success. There definitely is. Is college important? Yes. Uh, it would never not be. But it's mm -hmm. not the only way to be successful. And just like you said, too, and I can echo this as well, when I got out of college, it wasn't jobs knocking at my door. Mm -hmm. It wasn't money. I didn't start off making 60K. Shoot, I didn't start off making 30K. You know, it just, for me, now everybody is different. And I did internships. I did research. When I even went, went on to Specs Howard, I did internships too. For, for myself, it didn't pan out that way. Mm -hmm. So everybody's situation is different, you know. So it just depends on the individual child or, or person. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so let's um, kind of move over to the specific of black college. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think, well, I guess I'll start and then we'll <laughs> see what you think. Mm -hmm. So moving over to black college, like, is there a significance in that or, you know, do, is that important is that important for a young black woman or male to attend a black college? And obviously neither one of us, we, mm -hmm. we didn't go to a black college, right. but I will, this is what I'll say. This is how I felt mm -hmm. um, back in the day. I felt like, I'm just be honest. I felt that a black college was not realistic. I didn't think that it was going to provide a true uh, representation of what you are going to experience in the real world. Just like how you mentioned about, you know, you go the things that you when you go to college, you go, you're on your own now. Nobody's going to push you to um, go to class and things like that. So years ago for me. I just felt like a black college was, it wasn't realistic. You, you, we live in a world where there's different cultures of people. So to just like, just be with your people to me, wasn't going to help kind of equip you to, for the real world. So that's, that's honestly how I felt now. Um, I think it's, 
I think is it would be a great experience to go to a black college if that's something that my child wanted to do just so that they can be around like like minded people and just have that experience of being with, you know, other educated black people. Um, but, you know, whatever decision that they make, that's fine. I don't think that there's a, a, a right or wrong way to go when it comes to college. But I do think that now my mindset is that I, I think that it would be a great experience to be around um, you know, you're, we're black. So your people, <laughs> your people to get that experience. But yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, that's a good, that's a good point. And I will say that I'm very pro black college, even though I didn't go cause I was the same way growing up. Mm -hmm. I didn't get on board of black college until like eight years ago. So growing up, I didn't, matter of fact, I didn't really even care what college I went to, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I just applied to a bunch of schools. I got offers for a lot of them. Wayne State University offered the most money. And also my mom worked there. So I pretty much was able to go for free for a certain period of time. And then I had to still dibble dabble after that in student loans. But um, so, I, so I was the same way. It's mm -hmm. not realistic, blah, 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 doesn't matter. And I wish that my mindset was different because for me, I'm, I would not push, I would not push black college on our kid. No, but I will have a desire for them to want to go. So we would take tours. We also do the Ivy League schools too. We would do the miss, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And if they just decide Wayne State, Michigan State, or maybe some school out of state that's not black, that's what they want to do. Fine. Dad's going to go get his t-shirt. Where you going? And wear mm -hmm. proudly. Cause that's where my child is going mm -hmm. but culturally f speaking on if i can go to antoine at 17 culturally going to a black college for you would be much better culturally mm -hmm. and i think i know for a fact that if you would have went to a black college speaking to antoine marshall at 17 mm -hmm. he would have been in media a lot earlier mm -hmm. and a brother i also would have pledged I know for a fact I would have pledged mm -hmm. um, and I would have developed some strong brotherhoods mm -hmm. that I sometimes crave now mm -hmm. as a grown man. Not that my wife is, she is, but you know, sometimes you want, yeah. you know, uh, I, I was, I was doing a video shoot earlier today for a guy in his property and he had his um, girlfriend with him and we were all talking. He's been doing it for a while. And I told him how my wife and I, we got into it and how in the beginning, I tried to connect with brothers and he had the same experience as well too, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so we were just talking back and forth after the, the shoot about that. And I just think that I was thinking the same thing. It's not the real world, but there was a time where the real world, you got the black bottom here in, in Detroit. You have, um, what is in Tusca, Oklahoma, the, um, black wall street, black wall street. So you had strong, thriving communities of black people. So that was the real world. Mm. And we need to stop being afraid of saying, you know, this is for us in our community and it's okay. I want to do business with our community. Cause that's what everybody else do. Yeah. You know, so now that my wife and I are in the housing game, I'm, we're, we're coming across more and more people of African American people who are doing the same thing. And it's a beautiful thing. Cause I think we, we, we're 15% of the population. So I feel like we should own 15% of America. Mm. All of us, I don't care who you are, everybody. We should have 15% of America. So that only starts, so that mindset can grow even bigger at black colleges. You know, cause, cause everybody can be on the same, that whole school can be on the same page. So culturally, and then it's not just, just a culture thing too, it's, it's all of the, it's the band, it's the football games, the homecoming, it's the things that, I mean, Michigan State, your, your homecoming is probably way better than ours at Wayne State. But it, it's just the brother and sisterhood that you will develop that will, will also build your character, character quicker. Mm -hmm. And even if you went to a black college, you probably would have been that teacher or that pediatrician just because the black colleges are smaller and more intimate as well. Yeah. And they know you. 
Mm-hmm. You're not just a number to them. Right. I mean, still business. Don't get it twisted. Yeah. There's still people need loans with, with them as well. But they know you and understand you. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, I, I think for for us, I think definitely, hey, you know, ninth grade, when the kid gets to ninth grade, you know, what you think about some black houses? Let's go some tours. Tours. Matter of fact, let's see if we can take some trips and go to some of these homecoming games and just get that feel. Mm-hmm. You know, and a lot of a lot of these kids, they go to these homecoming games and just off the band, Dad, I'm going to Howard. I'm going to Tuskegee. I'm going to here. I'm going in there. So, uh, and they can always go to Michigan State and get their masters. U of M and get their masters, or you know, what I'm saying like that's what a lot of people have done. Mm-hmm. I know people who went to Wayne State and got their masters and doctors, but went to a black college. You know, so it's not the end all be all. You know, you'll still get that worldly view still. And these black colleges do a great job with integrating you into the real world. Um, you actually said exactly how I felt, <laughs> but you 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 explained it very eloquently Thank personally, you. I think. So I honestly had nothing to add to that because <laughs> <laughs> you you said exactly what I was thinking, mm-hmm. but I just didn't have the mm-hmm. words right now. Yeah. So um, no, that was great. I, I think that's that was great. That was great. Yeah. Well, there y'all have it. <laughs> um, so yeah, college is still important. Black colleges is something that you should introduce to your kids and give them an option. But also trade schools and other things of avenues of income. And I think as par- uh, uh, to all the parents, especially of our generation, I think if we do our job with building our um, uh, what you call it, with, with building our dreams ourselves, we can help our kids' dreams. And mm-hmm. they don't have to worry th- about the things we worried about growing up, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, if our future son or daughter is 18 and they're at a college and they see somebody building up a house and a house isn't that much and they come to us and like, hey, dad and mom, I got this idea of maybe getting into that. I got a few little thousand for myself. Can you all help? Sure. Here you go. Get that property. Live in it. Rent it out. Whatever. You know, I'm sure it's a little more detailed than that, but I'm just saying, like, you know, just really being able to allow kids to not be on the money hungry type thing that we were on, Mm -hmm. you know, because we have to be. Right. (laughs) Because we do want to make money. You know? Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yep. That's it. Okay. Well, that is it for today, guys. So, remember to share, like, and subscribe. Um, We post every Monday, so you can always Mm -hmm. look for our videos on Monday. Unless Facebook decides to do a blackout again. Blackout again. (laughs) So, you know, but yes, uh, so check out and soon we'll have some merch that we'll be showing off soon. So look look for that in the near future. We we're excited about that and everything. So we'll once we get everything done, we'll tell you all the name. So stay tuned. Until then, I am Antoine Marshall. I'm Chanel Marshall. And we are the Marshalls. We got to get a Marshall song. Yeah, Uh find a Marshall song. Well, okay, see y'all later. Peace out. (laughs) Bye.